Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your ghost. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth. Uh, I own Fitness Junkie Training, and I specialize in helping busy adults transform their lives physically and mentally. Today, we're joined by an extremely badass guest. We've got Ben Navarez on the podcast today. Um, ben has competed in powerlifting. He's been on the world stage and competed for America multiple times. Um, he also has a similar kind of roots in the fitness industry as I do where we got started. So we both have the same degree from Texas A&M, a whoop. And we also, <laughs> we also started at gold's gym kind of when we first got into the fitness industry officially, um, in college station as well. Um, so super excited for the conversation today, Ben, I really appreciate you coming on. Also, Ben has his own podcast, Ben thinking, just B E N thinking, and I'm, we'll get kind of more into what, what his, his podcast is all about as well. Um, but yeah, just pumped to have you on here, man. And first question I have for you, just so the listeners can kind of get to know you a little bit better. You know, what's your background? You know, how did you get into the fitness in industry and what's your fitness journey? Um, just kind of what's your story overall? I mean, I've for a long, thank you for the introduction. I definitely appreciate it. I appreciate being here. I thank you. Thank you also all the listeners as well for tuning in. Um, I started my fitness journey initially, I guess, when I was a kiddo, um, probably like six years old. We were blessed enough to be able to have a gym that was built next to the house. So my dad was, it, he is in the, the world of, <clears throat> of, um, being in the work in, in the police department. So it, fitness was something that was very important. He worked on the SWAT team. So they always worked out. And so days off, whatever it was, he would go to the gym that we had there at the house. And so and it, I said go to, because it was uh, built off site from the, from the house. So we would walk over there and I would do whatever he told me to do. Bicep curls, bench press, what, you know, dumb things with playing and then just playing on whatever cables were available so I guess that's where I, I started finding the love for it, really gravitated towards being in the gym just because it was time for me to be with my father and because it, playing on machines as a kid, is, and they're, they're just, ultimately they're just toys at that point, right? I mean, it's just yeah. throwing stuff around. So then I went ahead and I started getting a little bit more in, into the world of health and fitness when, um, or I guess fitness particularly, strength training in the seventh grade, just like most kiddos with, with sports, right. And started doing football and I was like the weakest kid on the team. I mean, everyone was in the killer bees that were playing when they were younger. So they had a lot more uh, experience being around sports. I, we just never had the opportunity to do work around that schedule being, uh, it was called the killer bees, right. You know, youth football. So I was brand new to the, to the world of, of sports and all the kids were stronger. It was, it was frustrating because uh, I had been in the gym for a little while, but not not that heavy. Mm -hmm. So um, I continued to just work at it because I was frustrated and wanted to get better. And then I progressed to the point where my freshman year, I really in, like I really, really enjoyed the gym. Like I cared more about that than playing football. And so I liked the community that football brought, but really I was there to, to hang out and lift weights. And so I decided that this was going to be what I was going to do. My coach kind of just tossed me into a, my first powerlifting meet, not really knowing what I was doing or expecting wraps and all this, all these equipment belts and things. I was like, okay, like, sure, man, that sounds good. I don't really know. And I don't even remember if I placed or if I bombed out or really what happened. It's kind of a blur. Uh, Saturday morning as a kiddo, you know, it was hard. So then I ended up getting surgery my sophomore year of, of high school. I got two surgeries. I got a surgery on my right knee, a medial meniscus tear and a slight ACL tear, and then a torn left labrum. So once I had had those surgeries, I got very into the world of, of, um, orthopedic surgery. Like that's where I wanted to go after this okay. worked with a couple of PTs and it's like, this is definitely where I want to be. 
And then I recovered. And then my junior year of, of high school, I ended up winning second in state. And so I did pretty well for the most part. Um, I had a, a little bit of a, of a drive to really, really come in the senior year because the guy who beat me in first place, I went up there, tried to shake his hands. Like, Hey man, congratulations. And, you know, like you want fair and square. It, the, it's, it's just strength training. Right. So it's like, to some degree, it's, you did more work or better work. You're older, whatever he was older than me, uh, whatever it may have been just you know, all in good faith. Right. And he just kind of looked at me and then just didn't shake my hand, turned around uh-huh. and then walked away. I was like, okay, well, that's cool. You know? So the following year, senior year, I came back and he had set the state record for the total and I had crushed it by about a hundred pounds. And yes. so I ended up coming in first place winning that was the first champion ever in in the history of my high school and it was at that point where i got introduced to preston turner outside of uh, ut because i I was like man i can do this after school maybe like this would be super cool so i found out that it did exist usapl was a a, an opportunity outside of just high school powerlifting. And so with the mindset of, yes, I need to go get educated for my degree so I can be an orthopedic surgeon. And I can also go ahead and go lift somewhere like UT is the spot. So I took my first USAPL being also my senior year of high school. And so I was doing both at the same time. And then I learned that you could qualify for team USA. So I went to nationals like a month after Uh, winning state and ended up winning nationals that year as well and ended up going to um, qualifying and making it to Hungary uh, just several months later. So I had the, you know, if you're an Aggie, you understand like the, the, you have gigam week, right. And so it was, or not gigam week, sorry. Um, the, the fish camp, right. It's fish camp. It's like, that's the thing that everybody does. Right. Yeah. So I really wanted to go to that, but it was going to be the week of worlds. And I was like, man, what do I do? Like, do I go to worlds or do I go to, to I say worlds? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we went to worlds, but it, honestly it was a tough decision because I could came back and I was like, man, I don't really know any of what's like the culture of AM. And AM is such a, a prominent culture. Yeah. It was like, this is kind of a difficult uh, situation. And then uh, ended up continuing my education at Texas AM, where we both got our degree in sport conditioning. And then I minored in psychology and coaching. And nice. then, um, yeah, continued to compete on AM's powerlifting team while I was there. And then continued to train at Gold's Gym. I mean, the, the story goes on and on, right? But um, I competed at several, uh, three, and ultimately three times for Team USA, uh, set 26, I think, or so, 30 ish uh, total state national uh, records. So um, definitely had a pretty fun career uh, in powerlifting. Pretty badass, man. Pretty awesome. And a lot to unpack there. But to go back to kind of the beginning of your story, um, I can really resonate with that. Just being, you know, in football, being kind of the the smaller, weaker kid, just getting started out. Like, you know, me and you are not the the biggest guys kind of genetically, naturally. <clears throat> but, you know, I can definitely resonate with the progress you see, like almost almost like starting out, you know, with that insufficiency, I feel like has maybe allowed us to be motivated to get to where we're at in the, in the fitness space right now, because, you know, if it came natural, if it came easy, we probably wouldn't be as motivated to, to work on it and, and be driven to, to see what we can accomplish and kind of reach our full potential. Um, so I think that's really cool. I, I kind of start out, you know, also a smaller kid, um, you know, one of the weaker kids on the football team. And I had to basically just grind in, like, I, you know, I had to work harder than everyone else to, to get on the team and, and like, you know, be one of the main players and everything like that. Um, but one thing I wanted to to ask you, you know, because you got into, into working out with your dad and that's awesome. And like, you know, that was kind of your own little playground um, in the gym when you were young, you know, what kind of, cause it sounds like you, you guys did some bodybuilding type stuff. Um, and I feel like a lot of people get into, you know, bodybuilding when they first get into fitness what made you, was it because you were a smaller guy in football um, that kind of like drew you to the, the strength aspect of things? Um, like what, what kind of made you choose strength or was it like, okay, if, when I'm working on this stuff, you saw that you had some potential there. Like what, what kind of made you choose strength over, over bodybuilding? Cause me, myself, you know, I, I kind of like to work on both. Sometimes I'm like, I'm more of a bodybuilder. Sometimes I'm more of a power lifter. Um, so what made you like, be like, all right, I'm going all in on strength. I mean, I don't know that I really made that that 
decision very consciously. It was more <laughs> like, I really want to get good at the sport of powerlifting. Like I like the squat bench and deadlift. I just like those, but really like I was wanting to be a bodybuilder and I didn't really, really realize that like that was, that there were two different things. Right. So I remember like everybody knows like the, if, if you're in fitness at any, at any point, like when you're first kid, you see those like those uh, magazines like that was you know i wanted to be a fucking ronnie coleman you know like that was the move you know every, every, yeah. like lightweight baby you know everyone watches the videos everyone does the whole thing and i was like this yeah. is like you can look like this you can transform your body into this thing and so i just got really into lifting weights and lifting a lot uh, probably because of understanding the way ronnie coleman moved and i watched he did lift a lot but he also did a lot of volume and so I wanted to have that, that duality as well. Um, but it was, it, I kind of just fell into the world of strength training because I, I, at that, by, I guess by my sophomore, by the end of my freshman year, I benched 405 without equipment, just raw. Wow, and crazy. so I, there, at that point I had seen like that there's definitely a potential here, but it's kind of yeah. cool. Like going from the guy who was in seventh grade, who couldn't bench the 25s on the bar and everyone else, like you had the guys that were like the, the cool kids on the, on the team that were benching, you know, 185. And I was like, God, like I'll never get there, you know, <laughs> and so like two years later I was benching 405 and they were still benching 225, 235. Right. And like, what? Oh yeah. Like th this is cool. Now people are looking and people are want me on the team. And, but I was like, you know, I, I like this part of it and I didn't really like the football part of it. I just like the strength training part of it. So I think like the attention is probably what kind of validated that. Um, mm -hmm. But it also felt good to feel strong. Like that, what it yeah. feels like to walk around and just know, yeah, I'm pretty much stronger than anybody in this room. <laughs> it's a badass feeling. Yeah. I completely resonate with that. And I, I completely like, I have a very similar experience to where like I, I could have actually played um, college football at like a D2, D3 school. You know, I, I had some scholarship offers, but it was like, I'm more in love with like the, what I'm, what I'm doing to improve in football. Like I'm, I'm, I'm having more fun within the gym than I am at practice. And so like, I went all in on that. Um, so I think that's really cool um, that you kind of have a similar um, way that you got into the fitness industry um, like me, but also I want to kind of relate this to to the listeners, you know, because not many are going to ever be able to bench four or five and stuff like that. But what, you know, why should the average person care about strength? Cause I feel like a lot of, you know, the average individuals or busy adults, you know, that they, they don't really see why strength is important. They're like, okay, well, I want to, you know, I want to, um, you know, just be able to play with my kids. I want to lose a little bit of body fat. You know, I just want to be fit and feel good. Um, so speak a little bit to why, why should the average person care about strength? So I think, I think I, I kind of uh, set a piece of that, which is like being able to walk around knowing that you're just, you're, you're capable of, of moving something, right? Somebody is going to like, who's going to be the first person they ask in the office to move the water jug it feels cool to be the guy that they're like, Oh dude, like Cade's fucking strong. Like go ask Cade, you know, like, or, you know, the ladies are getting something out of the car. It's like, I need help. Ben, can you come help me? Like, yeah, I'll come help. Like that. It's, it's a, like you, you add value to your community by just being a little bit more in shape, like on the, on, on the front end. And I think also like what it takes to be able to take care of all those aspects and then make progress in the gym is, is so transferable to what's going on in your own personal career. So a lot of people that I worked with and at my last, at the last company I was with were these, these very well-known business owners and they all worked out. And those who worked out hard and took care of themselves, they had a regimen of I'm waking up at 6 a.m. working out I'm working with a trainer. I'm taking care of my diet, my nutrition, my, my mobility. I'm doing all these little extra things. I'm sleeping yeah. well. I'm not drinking as much. Like, it encompasses so many more things than just the strength. It's the road to strength that builds a certain character that will benefit you in any career. So learning how to communicate, understanding how your body moves, having that self-awareness and that, that confidence 
whenever you're going to go close a deal, like it all matters the way you carry yourself, the way you communicate strength training physiologically provides a lot of benefits, but at the same time, mentally, I think at times provides even more benefit, like long-term, we're definitely going to increase bone density. We're going to increase the strength of our connective tissue, less likely to tear things as, especially if you get over older, you see it a lot with torn shoulders, torn rotator cuffs, torn broken hips. Like we see it all the time. So it reduces the chances of of those things, but it's also going to get you in a community of people that have a a like a, a shared mindset with, I want to be better in any single way that I possibly can and do it right and put good, honest work and understand that there's a delayed gratification with that. 100%, man, 100% agree. Um, And I think I'm seeing kind of your psychology minor come out with with some of your answers here. You know, and I wanted to ask, you know, I've got a lot of questions to ask you, but I I did want to hone in on that because I didn't know that's the minor that you chose. Because with our degree, um, you know, we got to choose the two minors. I also have the coaching one. Um, and then I, I went with business, but I, I'm also very interested in psychology. So what what have you found, you know, with that psychology minor and like with your experience now and working with people, how does how does psychology come into play? Like, how has that helped you? And, and you know, what what can other people take away um, from what you've learned through through that education and your experience helping coaching clients like use some of that with them? Yeah, I mean, it's understanding how to why the why people make the decisions they make and then how can we guide them in a way that will be something that sticks in their life for the long term because i'm not going to be around with them forever right Right. um they are going to have different trainers maybe they don't have a trainer anymore right maybe they move cities maybe i move cities but how can we train the brain the, the mentality as well. So that when I'm not there on a Monday and we train on Wednesdays, you kind of know what you're doing and you made the decision to get, come in there. You're building the confidence. You're, you build somebody's life and that transfers out into their relationships. They have healthy relationships. Then, you know, in the middle of a, I mean, in the middle of the session it, that, that hour, some, there is all, we're always working out. We're always moving, but there is always, a conversation about what's happening inside of their lives. What does your diet look like? What did you do last night? What are the kids doing? Like how, like how are the spouses doing? You know, like you really get to know these individuals. And so being able to communicate with them effectively uh, really makes a, a, a huge difference. I personally have gone through a lot of therapy for the last, like probably almost right about a decade now. Right. And I, I've used all of that. I, I, I have help I have worked on my own mental health and I think when I can recognize somebody like yesterday I had somebody that was having an anxiety attack in the middle of our session say okay no worries like we're gonna go through these steps we're gonna talk about it we did three exercises for the day but at the very end of it she's like you know okay like I'm surviving I'm making it like I just need I still need to go home and do these things but thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for the tools that we're that we're working on right she likes to say a lot of the times like it's almost like a second therapy because she goes to therapy on her own as well. So it's like understanding that a lot of people are, are having loneliness, are having depression, anxiety, and then how to work around those things and then make them better at coping with them because they never go away, right? It's like learning how to deal with my anxiety and moving forward and how to communicate that to my to anywhere from my client uh, or to my to my trainer, my coach, to to my to my spouse. Right, hundred percent, man. That's that's huge and. I think people really resonate with, you know, it, no one cares about what you know until they know how much you care. And I I think that that's what works in coaching a hundred percent. So that's awesome that you have that relationship with your clients. I I try to implement that into all my coaching relationships as well. Um, And I think it's, it's really important. I wanted to put a pin in that, you know, you've worked on your mental health as well. Um, And I think, I think sometimes therapy gets a, a stigma or a bad rap or a bad reputation um, because people think you have to have issues with you to go to the therapy or something like that, where I think everyone should go to therapy or like work on their mental health in general. And I think, you know, a lot of that is working on your physical health too. And a lot of therapists you'll go to will say, you know, you need to eat right and work out. That's going to help your, your mental health as well. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, but I've been seeing a therapist as well for myself. And I, I find that it's extremely beneficial um, but I, it yeah, yeah, it changes your life a hundred percent. Um, and you know, whether it's working on your physical body or your mental health, um, kind of what, 
along with what you were saying, like how you do anything is how you do everything. So like, if you can take control, um, you know, feel confident in, in your physical health, like you've got full control. If you, if you can take control of your mental health, like there's no limit to what you're going to be able to accomplish. Right. And you want to be well-rounded. You want to, you want to make sure that, you know, your relationships are strong, your, your mental health is strong and your, your physical health is strong. That's what kind of the elevate everyday podcast is all about. So I love all the things you're talking about, man. Really cool. So one thing, you know, I want to know a little bit more about what your podcast is about. And I think we've got plans uh, for me to hop on yours as well. So what are you trying to accomplish with the, the bin thinking podcast? So I want people to be intentional and conscious with the things that they choose to engage themselves with. That is who they listen to. That is what gyms they go to, what communities they surround themselves with or in, um, all of these things matter. Be intentional with the things that you do. If you're going to uh, go out drinking, that's like, there's nothing wrong with that, but understand that that's a choice you're making and you can't wake up the next day and say, oh man, I hate that I spent so much money last night. It's like, well, you, like you should have known, like you, you, yeah. you made the decision to go out, understand what the consequences are going to be. And if those consequences still fit with your actions, then go ahead and move forward, man. Like it's okay, but understand the repercussions of the actions that we make. So I think intentionality is, is a big thing in my life. I have another company called IE health. It is a intentionally engineered health, right? Mm-hmm. So like everything is going to be in with intention and done and done with a, the good conscious man just say, yeah. wake up be conscious like take advantage like take take control of your own life because there is definitely the opportunity to in some areas and other areas there's not right can you really control what the government is doing no not fucking really right like that's just my opinion right but uh, can i control whether i'm going to go out drinking or if i'm going to stay in and cook my own dinner 100 percent all day right and so you take those little steps and they <laughs> change your life well wow, that's that's awesome dude and that's like, I can't say enough how much of my, <laughs> my content has been around that recently. <clears throat> so it's kind of crazy how in line we are with some of our philosophies and what we believe. Um, but I, I'll almost get told by, you know, friends, family, sometimes like you're being ignorant, you know, you're being naive, you're like you need to watch the news. But I just like you just said, you know, I try to control what I can actually control. Right. I'm, I'm like, I don't need to watch the news. Like I, I, I can't, I can't affect what Joe Biden's doing. Like, you know, I I have no control over so many different things. I'm going to control what I can control in my life um, and make sure that the people around me, the people that I'm interacting with, like I'm helping them level up. And then in turn, that's going to, that's just going to help the world go around, honestly. So, you know, I honestly believe like affect what's around you, control what you can control. And there's just going to be positivity that comes out of that. So completely resonate with that, man. That's awesome. Control Um, your controllables, as they say. Yeah. And yeah, be yeah. the change you want to see. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and don't be a victim, you know, cause kind of what you were saying, you know, sometimes people will, <clears throat> you know, they'll, they'll be like, well, this is happening in the news. This is going to affect my life. You know, don't let that affect your life. You know, just, just focus on the things that you can control. Um, and the, the best is going to come out of that. There's no use in worrying about the things that you can't control. Right. And then I loved what you said too, about kind of, I, I like to call it like kind of curating your content, um, so just making sure that whatever you're consuming, cause our thoughts are just formed by a lot of who we're around, you know, the five friends are around that, whatever that quote is, you know, but also just like the social media you're consuming, whatever you're listening to, even if you're watching TV, like pay attention to everything you're taking in. Um, cause it has such a big impact on your thoughts. Right. So I, I completely resonate with that point that you made as well. I like um, that point a lot. I think it's like, if and that's part of the reason that I listen to the people specifically that I listen to, if I, if, if, if maybe they're not in my direct community and I can't go and hang out at the bar with them or at the gym with them or whatever it may be. Yeah. And at least I can like get kind of an insight into how they're thinking. Like you're the closest, you're the, you're some of your five closest friends, right? Well, yeah. um, the, I think it's very like, what am I learning from the people that I'm listening to? Like, right. If I'm listening to other high performers, then I'm going to probably be another high performer. I'm going to have that mindset and have that outlook. And so hopefully <laughs> creating a community around the podcast of people yeah. who are wanting more for their lives. And then everybody having that own, like, Oh shit, you listen to Ben thinking like, or you should, <laughs> Oh shit, you listen to elevate every day. Like, yeah. damn, dude, did you hear like 
uh, how, what are you doing different in your life that's going to help promote your stuff? Oh, dude, I'm reading this book right now, right? Like yeah. it, it perpetuates. It's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I think to kind of piggyback on that too, it's like sometimes, you know, you can't 100% curate your, your like real world people you, who you interact with. Like you're going to have to work with some coworkers, you know, you're going to be around family and stuff like that. You know, you got to be around your loved ones and everything and be a part of your family. But what's cool about kind of the online communities that you can build these days is you really can kind of curate, like you're saying, like who you listen to, um, you can curate who you're collaborating with uh, on podcasts and stuff like that. What, what groups you're joining, you know, to, to kind of help yourself elevate level up. Um, so I think it, you know, a lot of times these days, uh, social media, the internet gets a bad rap, but when you're curating it, it can be a very positive thing. Right. So I, I hope people, you know, kind of take that away from this. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, other than something fitness related, and you already talked about therapy, which is awesome, but it sounds like you've been doing that for a while. You know, in what ways, um, have you made like maybe a big lifestyle change in the last, let's say year, you know, what, what are some things that you've improved over the last year about your own lifestyle that you feel has had a, a big impact on you? This is a, a good question because I think that a lot of times people see guys in the fitness industry and if like, if I'm not benching what I used to bench, then I'm not as good <laughs> as I was. And it's like, well, like what else do you got going on, man? Like, right. um, I, I bought a house. Um, right. I, so invested in some real estate. I have uh, some tenants uh, looking to buy another home. So like there's been progress in, in investments in, um, in, in both real estate and with market. And it's been a fun journey of taking a chance on my skill sets of communication. And uh, I sold houses for a while. I used to, I was doing uh, project management for a uh, construction company. So I was building like 30 homes at a time at one point. And so like time management has been one and also learning how to delegate a little bit more. So I mean, there, there's been a lot that I've added, but learning to delegate and like going ahead and, and getting that, that uh, business coach and getting the mm -hmm. secretary and getting the producer and it does take time and it is not cheap, but there are things that are, that are going to free up my time and my space to do things that are going to be more effective for me. Um, learning when to say no to people. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, I've, I am continuously trying to change the things that I'm doing, really doubling down on the podcast and asking people one to be on, but also to help support, right? Like it is, it is my responsibility to myself. I was sitting in my studio in Texas and I had just left the, the construction company and I was kind of deciding between, I was on my third interview with Northwestern Mutual, um, looked like I was going to get the job. It was pretty much it was a yes. Um, just needed to go in and finalize. And then I had another construction company that was going to hire me as a sales rep for them as a new home sales rep. And then I had the podcast and I was sitting around and I was like, you know, man, this is a business like, yeah. and I can decide on how much energy I give this business. And if I really, really wanted to do well, then let's go ahead and give it its full shots. Like give it its full energy that it deserves. So I, and I had, at that point, I already sued out of a room. I did all the audio. Um, I had um, not, not mapping, but um, uh, gosh, I added all the, the sound blankets and the, um, bought the better mics, right? We, we spent a lot of money on getting all the right equipment. And so I was like, let's go ahead and let's, let's really try to do this thing and started banging out podcasts, started getting some sponsors, um, mm -hmm. really trying to push the envelope with, and I was lucky enough that I had the opportunity to make that move. Yeah. Um, like to be able to have some time off and only contribute to this thing, but it is, it is paid dividends and it's been a really cool opportunity of growth. And also a really, like you get to meet so many different, really interesting people. So, I mean, there is, there's a lot that I'm continuing to add into my life and setting myself on specific goals. I wanted to do 12 podcasts this year. I'm now at 40. So like, and we're, we're not, we're not stopping. And so it's been constantly learning about SEO and anything that I can do to give this baby some love. 
That's awesome, dude. I'm, I'm happy for you. It sounds like your hard work's paying off um, and you're chasing something that you're passionate about, which I think, you know, a lot of times when you take that risk, it's scary. Um, a lot of people know, I just talked about this, my story um, about a year and a half ago, I got fired from my office job and it was kind of decision time. Do I want to like, just look for another nine to five job or do I really want to, you know, go all in on this fitness stuff? And so I decided to do that it's the scariest thing, but it's that risk brought me the best reward you know, out of anything else in my life. So um, I think it'll pay off for you too with your podcast. Just keep, you know, putting the effort in and you're going to reap the rewards 100%. Um, but, you know, it sounds like you're doing some really good things with your life and you're leveling up. You know, you're, you're being a true uh, kind of fitness junkie, like we say, and kind of like elevating every day. Like you're, you're living all this stuff. Like one thing I hear, and I wasn't planning on asking you this question, um, but a lot of times I'll hear the excuse of like, I'm too busy for fitness. Like I've got too much going on. This, this doesn't fit into my life right now. Um, how would you talk to someone who's maybe saying something like that? Like they're, they're too busy for fitness. They think they've got too much going on. You know, what, what would you say to someone like that? Um, and how have you kind of created that balance with your fitness and everything you have going on now? It again, comes down to being intentional with that. Right? If you have the time, yeah. You just don't want to make the time because there's another priority and that's okay, but realize the effect that's having on your body and your mental health long-term and short-term. Yeah, You have the time. And if you really care about your, your performance in your career, then you will make the time to do 30 minutes of a walk or an hour of a small weight training Buy some, if you really can't go to the gym because it's too far, buy some kettlebells online or buy a couple cheap dumbbells and you can't do that. Get a jump rope, like do some pushups, do some squats. Like you, it, it, it's right outside of your house. Like or it's inside your house. You don't want to go outside because it's too hot. I'm in Vegas right now. It's hot as shit. It's been 120 degrees. Like, yeah. I don't want to go outside, but you know what? I can do my pushups inside my room or my squats inside my room. Yep. I can stretch. Like there's so many different areas of fitness that you could be working on. And sure, yep. you might be very busy in this season of your life. But does that mean you can't, before you even get out of bed in the morning, do a couple figure fours and maybe some ABCs with your ankle? Like good, good ankle health and good proprioception, good mobility for the hip. Like my back hurts. Most likely it's because of tight hips. So then how can like, you can still do that in bed. You don't have to get out, right? Like there is the opportunity for you to have time for fitness and health, but if it's not in line with your priorities, realize that the consequences are going to be a decrease in performance, a decrease in overall satisfaction and quality of life. If you're okay with that decrease in satisfaction of your, of your life. Sure. Yeah. Don't do fitness. That's cool. But if you really want to double down and get better, then get your ass doing something, dude, anything, right. just do right. something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think honestly, when people say that they think they're too busy, I think it honestly is a, a mental kind of barrier they have. And I've, I've honestly, like, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll, I've felt this way, you know, when I was, when I was running this business on the side, and I was doing an eight to five job, um, you know, I was in a relationship, just a lot of stuff going on. Like, it was really hard for me to work out at that time. It was all mental, though. It's not like I like couldn't physically do it, or I didn't have the time for it. It was just like, getting myself in the right mindset to do these activities was hard. And there was just kind of a mental block there. Something that I've found for myself that's helped me um, is, you know, to improve having a positive mindset all the time, because I'm still very busy. Um, but to keep myself in a positive mindset, journaling and mindfulness has been something that's helped me a lot, you know, just making sure I feel grateful, excited for the day every day, um, kind of just reflecting, you know, making sure I'm working on things I need to work on. Um, you know, what are maybe some things, some tips that you would have as far as like if someone's because you, you also have the psychology um, minor and everything, kind of the background, just working with people. I'm sure you've come across experiences like this where people just say they're too busy or they're just too stressed. They can't work out things like that. Like, you know, how would you tell someone to try to help themselves, you know, help their mindset um, and get them past that barrier and get them, you know, just taking those steps to get active? I think that the the first thing can be journaling. Um, it, it it's it's hard because it, it it's a it's a very 
good and broad question. So it's like, is there one thing that's going to fit everybody? No. Some people really want to start with journaling. Some people just need to start off with a push up a day, two push ups a day. Uh, some people just need to start having the conversation and listening to the right people who are in their community or like you have a fit friend, like go and talk to them. It's not that they know everything, but the fact that they live a certain lifestyle and you're like, Oh man, they're going to the gym again. Like, yeah. fuck, maybe I should just go to the gym. Right. Like surround yourself with, with the people that you, if you want to get fit, surround yourself with people who are fit. Right. And if that means you just go to the gym, you just walk and walk on that treadmill, you're going to start seeing people want to like they're lifting weights. I want to lift weights too. I want to get more fit so then how can i also do that maybe i ask somebody maybe i ask a coach um maybe a coach is too expensive there, there's plenty of online resources that you could find that's not an in in person um coach right there's there's online training programs out there and i i understand that at, there's a lot of times there, there's just so much volume out there it's hard to decide on like how do you choose somebody and i think some good things to look for is like a cpt um certified personal trainer is, is a good simple one um if they have a cscs then great like like fantastic right if they have, an, they have a, a bachelor's or a master's degree probably you know they, they, they have these little steps of validation but then with that you have to understand that cost will usually increase as well um so like set a budget and then if it's out of your budget then go to the next person don't overcomplicate it yeah. just find the thing that's gonna or youtube i mean shit i mean there's free stuff on youtube all, like everywhere right like I mean, journaling, I think is a, is a big one. Um, and fitness is not just physical fitness is mental as well. Yes. So doing those things are important, but understand that it, this is the long game. You're not going to be perfect. Your first time you got to crawl before you can walk. You got to walk before you can run. And then you got to be able to run well before you start doing Olympic lifts, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it's a progression. It takes time. Like it, be patient. This is not, you're not going to get fit tomorrow. You're not going to get fit next week or in a couple months, you're going to get more fit, but there, it's a journey. There's not a destination. It's you're constantly getting more fit. You're constantly getting maybe more mobile or getting a little yeah. bit more flexible. Like yeah, it's a journey. Be patient. For sure. Yeah. And I think it goes back to the, like, you know, you were touching again on kind of just curating your content, curating your environment. You know, if you're around a bunch of people that just go out every weekend drink a bunch and maybe they're even like talking down on fitness, then that, that's going to rub off on you. Right. So try to try to be around the right influences, listen to the right people and everything like that. So that, you know, if, if this is something that's truly important for you, start feeding your mind, um, what it, what it's going to take to, to help you level up and, and accomplish what you want to accomplish in this area. Um, for sure. Yeah. And I think that also what you said about it, it being a journey, you know, it's a process, you know, try to try to just make the process what's fulfilling for you right don't don't be like if i don't get to a six pack in this amount of time then then this isn't worth it or i'm not enjoying this right just um you know enjoy the process enjoy feeling better after each workout right enjoy just the fact that you're trying to improve because that's going to help your mindset in other areas right if you're if you're actively trying to improve your your physical aspect of your life then you know that's going to manifest in other areas like we talked about before so 100 percent, man I think Very especially cool. when first starting, people get so obsessed with like it. The easiest thing is like, I want to lose 30 pounds. And it's like, man, what if I told you you could lose five pounds, look better and feel better, move better than you ever have. Would yeah. you still be okay with that? Well, yeah, I guess I would. Well, <laughs> then don't be married to the 30 pounds. Like yeah. think bigger than that. Not just the yeah. number that you think is going to get you where you are. Yeah. Like fucking like understand that this is that there's more to it than just the, the just the scale right. if you look better you feel better you walk better you have less pain yeah. and you maybe you're still 20 pounds heavier than you than you expected to be right. then that's still a win like why are you like why beat yourself up on the fact that you haven't lost this x number when you can still look in the mirror and be like man i can fucking see some triceps i can see some biceps i can kind of see some abs but yeah. i'm not 20 pounds less and so i'm mad about it so fuck <laughs> fitness so it's like you're being ridiculous you're being insane like this is not beneficial for you or anybody else and if anything if you just like looked in the mirror and like wow like I'm making some progress, then that's going to roll over into the next workout or the next one. And you're going to stay motivated to stay in it. And then mm -hmm. sure, 20 pounds may or may never come off, but you may look better than you ever have. Yeah. Yeah. I was having a conversation with a client just recently. He's like, he's not satisfied with the weight loss that he's seeing. And I ask him questions like, oh, are your clothes fitting better? Yeah. I'm down like two, three 
pant sizes. Like, are, are you feeling more energetic? Yeah. Yeah. I feel, I feel great. <laughs> are, are you, are you noticing like, are you seeing more muscle like in the mirror? Like, are you noticing differences? Oh yeah. Like my triceps are popping out. Like I can notice more arms. I think even my abs are coming in. It's like, well, it's not all about the scale, right? It's just yeah, exactly. it's pretty crazy sometimes. Um, I think it's because it's simple. It's, it's, it's like pushed on us so much. Like BMI is everything. Every time you go into the thing and every time you go to the doctor, like BMI, BMI, oh, you're obese, you're overweight. And yeah. it's like, you don't know how much that girl on Instagram really weighs, or you don't know <laughs> really what she's eating or what she isn't eating. Right. Like there's also people who are professionals that do this for a living. The, if this is not what you're doing for a living, then you probably are never going to look like that. Maybe sure. I'm not going to say you're not, or you can't, but like their lives revolve around your eyes looking at how, what they're doing. Yeah. It's attractive comparison yeah. is the thief of joy you yeah. do not have that lifestyle so understand where you're at appreciate where you're at and then continue to move continue to grow yeah yeah if you're getting better if you're a little bit better than you were yesterday then you should be happy right 100 percent. so i want to ask you this um because you you kind of alluded to it almost seeming like you're retired from from strength performance or stuff like that earlier <laughs> but like what what are you currently striving for like in the strength world for yourself so this is a good question. Um, it has been a very rocky journey since uh, uh, retiring in 2017. So I kind of hung my hat. I went to Worlds and got a couple gold medals and a couple silver medals. And so it, it, it went pretty well. And I decided that I wanted to take some time off from the sport and getting back into it has been tough. Understanding like where I am in my fitness journey has also been quite, quite difficult. Yeah. Um, trying to make professional goals or professional progress um, in, in that side of my, like my career um, has been, it's, it's, it's hard, man. Like yeah. I think that people expect us to just like, Oh man, like they just have fitness down. They're always going to be strong. They're always going to be, right. um, in like knowledgeable in this area and like i went to go get my master's during that time as well um right now a very long-winded answer but to, to answer the question is i have decided i would take up a meet in in december and nice. so i will get back into the fitness industry uh, or get back into the world of strength through that method um i have a discussion here uh working with tomorrow morning working with some uh, professional athletes and so i do work with a couple professional uh, i have one professional dancer right now i have a couple uh, models uh, that i work with um and so one of the one of my clients is uh, the form a, a former los is it los um los angeles chargers right is that the football team uh so. San Diego Chargers, San Diego Chargers. There you go. I don't watch football. Um, <laughs> she, so she's a former San, uh, San Diego Charger um, cheerleader girl. So, and then like looking to go into the NBA now. So making a transition. Um, and so I, I get to work with a lot of really cool athletes and it's looking like I'll get into the world of working with more NFL and NBA athletes, helping them with strength training as well. Nice. Um, for me personally, I think that continuing just to, to be strong, feel good has been a yeah. uh, big thing for me so a lot of mobility a lot of flexibility taking care of my body um yeah. it is it is almost expected of me to be strong which has been a very interesting thing it's like oh yeah you know in in personal training you have to sell yourselves and so i do tell people like this is where i'm coming i'm not just a regular personal trainer i competed for team usa i have a master's degree and like oh wow would you bench right it's like well, I benched, I benched 551, um, but like, it's been a while, right? I'm not doing that style of training anymore. I want, I want right. fitness, right? I want health and yeah. I want longevity. And so that's been more my move lately, uh, but I will be taking up another meet here in December uh, here in Las Vegas. That's awesome, man. Well, yeah, I, I want to touch on, you know, this is something I've noticed because I've followed some fitness YouTubers, you know, ever since I started kind of getting into fitness a long time ago. Um, some of them are, you know, in their mid thirties now. Um, and I, I've noticed there's been kind of an evolution with a lot of these, um, fitness YouTubers that I follow where it's like, you can't just keep getting stronger forever. You can't keep getting more shredded. So, you know, it, there has to be kind of a natural evolution of like, you know, it, it, I can't just 
improve forever. I can't always please the masses with how extreme I'm getting with everything, you know, at a certain point, um, you know, it has to be more about like, you know, this is my journey, you know, you're either kind of following me for, for who I am and, and what I can provide for you, you know, what value I'm providing for you. Um, cause you can't be expected to, to literally get stronger forever or, or get more shredded for, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, I think that's just a natural evolution. Um, but I think, you know, you, you can still provide just as much, if not more value by what you're doing for others, you know, how you're coaching others, what kind of value you're, you're providing on the internet with your communication. Um, and I think it's also a testament to, you know, if, if someone else says they're too busy or, you know, they're not happy with their progress, you know, look at people like, like us who have been doing it for so long to the point where our progress is, you know, it, it's very small at this point, if, if anything, because we've become so advanced in what we do um, that the progress is so small, but, it doesn't mean that we're going to stop fitness. Right. So it kind of goes back to the conversation we had right before that. Um, so I I'm hoping that just me, you know, you probably resonate with this too. Just, just trying to progress every day. I'm hoping that that's motivating people, you know, elevate every day. You know, there's going to be certain things you're not going to be able to elevate a hundred percent on, you know, every single day, you know, day in day out. But if you're trying to get 1% better in, in some area every day, that's going to compound so much over time. And that's why we're trying to like encompass all different areas, relationships, phys- you know, your physical being, your, your mental health, everything like that. That could so. even be drink, drinking just an extra bottle of water a day. I mean, just <laughs> it can drink, be super small. <laughs> you know, it can be super yeah. small and it can like, it's going to add up to this fi- this final moment where you're like, man, I got out of, I got off my medication. Like I'm not long, I'm no longer taking blood pressure meds. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking any like cholesterol meds, and it's like, yeah, it was a culmination of all those extra bottles of water, all those extra small changes that you made to your life. That that yeah. that extra hour of sleep, or like you know, like it makes a big difference long term, where you finally see this like, oh shit, that's why I've been doing this. Yeah, like, I get it now. You know, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's gonna pay off. All the any effort you put in, you're gonna reap the rewards. You know, um, and I, I feel like I can talk about this stuff for hours with you, Ben. And I, I'm sure we'll have another podcast in the future because this has been awesome for me. I hope you've had a good time. i um, looking forward to being on yours as well. Um, but, you know, to wrap this one up with one kind of final question, you know, this podcast is all about elevating every day, obviously. Um, what's like one simple daily habit, you know, something super small that you'd like to challenge the listeners to take action on after listening to this? Be honest to those around you and be honest to yourself. There you go. Be honest. Take ownership. Very cool. Awesome, brother. Well, I really appreciate you being on, Ben. Um, thank you so much. This has been an amazing episode. Hope you guys listen. I've gotten a lot of value out of this. Ben has just been pouring his heart and experience out onto this podcast. So we appreciate you, man. Um, hope to have you back in the future. Looking forward to being on yours. Any final words or anything you want to promote? I mean, obviously your podcast, but um, what would you like to promote to the people? Yeah, um, go follow the podcast. Ben Thinking with Ben Nevadas, Spotify, wherever else you want to, you can find it. Um, definitely go and share this podcast with your friends. That does that just doesn't just help us. It doesn't help um, not not just me or just Kay, but it helps those around you and it creates a community around you as well. And so if you can continue to create a strong community of like-minded individuals that will help you stay accountable as well, like it, it goes a very long way when you finally, when you see a friend and they're like, Hey, did you go to the gym today? And you're like, damn it. Like, it's like, Hey man, <laughs> you heard what Kate said the other day. Yeah. Like you gotta do so what'd you do today? Like you're going to have people <laughs> who are going to keep you accountable, but you have to be open and honest and vulnerable in those spaces. If I'm just, Oh bro, I just want to just hang out and not do anything. But in, internally, I really, really want to make progress in my life. Then yeah. the universe is going to continue to, to, to kind of feed you what you're putting out there. And cause people are going to invite you to the parties. People are going to invite you to those things rather than inviting you to listen to the next new podcast or inviting you to listen to the next potential, like new cool diet. Or um, uh, I, I started taking krill oil. So in the next new better supplement like it's you if you really be are, are, are honest with those that are around you like you're, you're gonna you're gonna get stuff that's gonna be fed to you a little bit more um 
that, that align that aligns with who you are and your goals a little bit more readily. So go follow the podcast, go follow Cade. Thanks, man. I appreciate the time. Um, and then the, the Instagram is Ben Nevadas and you, know, you just do that. <laughs> Very cool. You heard the man be a positive influence to everyone around you. All right, guys. So appreciate you guys. Hope you got a ton out of this podcast. Um, see you in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every day. Peace out y'all. Cheers.